Good morning. We're in chapter 30 of the book of Job. Chapter 30 of the book of Job. <laughs> at, at the end of chapter 29, we, we, we see a little section of, of Job kind of reminiscing of, of how things were, um, of how uh, people used to react to him. Um, and, and then... In, in, in chapter 30, he starts kind of this uh, woe is me type speech. Um, what I want us to understand as we go through this is, is Job not necessarily sins, but he, he comes close a couple times. He, 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 uh, maybe, and maybe it was unto him a sin. Now, the scripture talks about sin being different for different folks. Uh, what you understand and what I understand, if God convicts us, that, well, the definition of sin is anything that separates us from God. Anything that comes in and we choose it over God. And, and so, uh, uh, or um, that we allow it to affect our relationship with God. That's really what sin is. Um, and so here, Job... He gets to a kind of a borderline, and as we're, we're winding up, this is towards the end of his talk. Um, there's going to be one more little fella speak, and then Job may answer again. I'm not really sure, but I, I, and, and then he may speak again. And then God, ultimately, God comes in pretty soon uh, towards the end of this. But Job start back a little bit back in 29 and 28. Job has already kind of called out his enemies. Chapter maybe it was chapter 27. Uh, Job has kind of called out his enemies and and he's he's you know basically said you know I kind of wish they'd fall on their face for once. Um, and uh, and and here in 29, uh, I mean verse I mean chapter 30, he he starts. Um, talking about how people are treating him. He says, But now they sport of me, those who are younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to sit with the dogs of my flock. So he, he's talking about, all right, here y'all come, you young whippersnappers. I'm older, I'm more wiser, I know more things. I've been around the block a little bit longer. And actually y'all's fathers... He's kind of throwing their fathers under the bus. He said, I wouldn't even set them in, in, in there and let them watch my flock with my sheepdog. Uh, they were that crooked um, is how they uh, seen it or how he saw, saw their fathers. Uh, so he throws a little dig at them, and uh, he says, but now they disdain me. They mock me. He says, what could I gain from the strength of their hands? All their vigor is gone. Their, their want... In hard hunger, they gnaw the dry and desolate ground. They pick mallow and the leaves of the bushes, and to warm themselves the root of the broom. They are driven out from society. People shout after them as after a thief. In the gullies of the wadis, they must live in a hole underground and in the rock. Among the bushes, they bray. Under the nettles, they huddle together, a senseless, disruptible brood. They have been wiped out of the land. Um, Job, basically speaking here, says uh, that, that he, these people, these young whippersnappers that are coming after him, basically they're, they're, they're the lowest of the low. He, he's, he's not holding back any punches here. He, he, he's, he's saying, look, y'all are horrible. Uh, and, and, I mean, there's no easy way around it. That's what he's saying. And, and so I told you, uh, it gets to the point here, well, well, is this a sin? Is this not a sin? You know, uh, Jesus called the religious leaders a brood of vipers. Um, and, and sometimes uh, calling people for what they are, um, I don't necessarily think it's a sin. Now, you're not, uh, you got the old adage, you're not going to win somebody over. Uh, you're not going to catch flies with vinegar or, or catch ants or bees or however you've heard it. Uh, with vinegar, you're going to catch them with honey, right? Um, and, but, but here, sometimes, people need to hear, 
that they're being mean, that they're being ugly, that they're not very good people. Uh, and so whether we look at it as, you know, Job sinning or, um, you know, he's just had enough. I mean, he's hurting, he's in pain, uh, and he's just had enough, and so he's letting them have it a little bit. And in verse 9, he goes on, he says, Now they mock me in song, and I am, by where, I am a byword to them. They abhorred me. They keep aloof from me. They do not hesitate to spit on, at the sight of me. Now, people are spitting on him. Uh, because God has loosed uh, my bowstring and humbled me, and they have cast off restraint in my presence. Um, uh, on my right hand, they rabble, rise up. They send me sprawling and build roads for my ruin. They break up my path. They promote my calamity. No one restrains them. As though, um, as through a wide breach, they come amid the crash. They roll on. Terrors are turned upon me. My honor is pursued as by the wind and by prosperity has passed away like a cloud. So these people are being mean to him. And that's what he says. You know, he, he told them what they, he thought of them, and then he tells them why. Because you're being mean to me. Uh, you're taking advantage of me. Yeah, uh, you're you're um, uh, coming along and, and putting me uh, in an awkward position. You, you, you're just being mean and, and terrorized. They feel, he feels like they're terrorizing him. They're, they're taking... Uh, the road that he's walking, basically he accuses them of just, if he's walking down the road, tripping him and making him fall and uh, ridiculing him. Now really and truly, this is he's kind of elaborating here. He's kind of giving a, uh, because we know really and truly he, he hasn't really gotten up from where their conversation was. It's just people have gathered. And maybe people have started spitting on him. We don't really know. Um, but that's what he says, and, and he just feels like he's being beaten and berated and, and, and attacked. Um, and, and the irony of it is these people are claiming to know God. They're claiming to be godly people and trying to help him get back on the right track. But once he doesn't kind of fall into their, oh, yes, I've sinned, let me ask for forgiveness, they get out the stick and they start beating him. And, and so my question, and, and this kind of goes along with what we talked about the other day, you know, how many times do churches do that? How many times do churches basically get out the biblical stick and whoop people with it? Um, it's happened in the past. A lot of your churches nowadays don't have that because you got a lot of fruitcake churches nowadays, in my opinion. Uh, they don't really talk about scripture. They don't talk about, oh, it's just, oh, we, uh, everybody's going to heaven. It's just all grand and glorious, those type churches. And and here, we don't, it, 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 there's a drastic correlation. Maybe this church, uh, these type things might have went on in the 50s and 60s and 70s uh, where, uh, people would go to church and they basically would hit them with the Bible when they come in and those type deals, you know. Um, but not all churches were like that. And I think there's a, there's a, a drastic difference uh, in a church that preaches the Bible. The Bible, uh, you know what the greatest thing, I don't have to hit anybody with scripture or, or with anything. I don't have to tell anybody uh, the, the Bible says it will correct people itself. You know, you're never going to hear me, uh, most of the time, you're never going to hear me just come up to you and be like, well, that's a sin. Because the Bible says it will correct people. God said, in fact, in one of God's words, he says, I, he, talking about him, that God will do the correcting. That he will do uh, the uh the word I'm looking for here, uh, the chastisement, the, uh, you know, showing, the revealing uh, that is the sin, and that he'll be the one to show us uh, that we're sinning, uh, the conviction, that, that's the word I was looking for. God's the one who does the convicting. 
And so, uh, these people, once they didn't, once Job didn't fall for their conviction, their convicting, well, they turned on him. And that's happened too, right? I I mean, that's happened in churches. Y'all have heard of it happening. I I guarantee you, because I've heard of it happening. When somebody so-and-so didn't like the conviction that the church threw upon them, the church decided, well, we're going to go tell everybody around in the community what that person did or what we think they did or their conviction. So, uh, so the idea here is that the, uh, the people are, are terrorizing him and Job has that same feeling. Uh, and I just want us to, uh, make sure as a church, as Christians, as the church, that we're not doing this, that we're not reading and berating. The Bible says the when we correct people, we correct them in love. Um, and so we go on to verse, it's, uh, verse 16, and, and, and Job here begins to shift to talking to God. And, and he, now he, he's going to kind of... Uh, He's going to kind of uh, accuse God a little bit here. Um, some of the titles in some of your Bibles may be that uh, the uh, where Job accuses God, um, and it, he's just basically telling God his feelings. Now, what, one thing I want you to understand: he's not he's not cursing God. He's not uh, saying God's evil. He's basically saying that he's just saying that God is doing this to him, and he doesn't know why. Uh, he, he's 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 chastised. He's being chastised. He's being. He does say that God's abusing him uh, to some extent, um, or at least that's some of the translations. Um, and maybe that's not necessarily was his exact intent, but he he does feel that he's being. Uh, abused, and he feels that God has the hand in it. Uh, he says, Now my soul is poured out within me. Days of affliction have taken hold of me. The night racks my bones, and the pain that gnaws me takes no rest. With violence he seizes my garment. He grasps me by my collar of my tunic. He has cast me into mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry to you, and you do not answer. I stand, and you merely look at me. You have turned cruel to me. With the might of your hand, you have persecuted me. You lifted up, uh, lifted me up upon the wind. You make me ride on it, and you toss me about in the roar of a storm. I know that you will bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. So he feels that God's going to let him die, uh, and he feels like God is is allowing this to happen. And he he basically he feels shook up. He feels abused. He feels kind of beaten and. Uh, and it just kind of feels like God's being cruel. Uh, he says, you've turned cruel to me. Um, in verse 24, he goes on, he says, Surely one does not uh, turn against the needy when in disaster they cry for help. So Job basically, now he's going back to his friends and maybe even to God too. Uh, Job is, has now positioned himself as he feels like he's the needy now. He's lost everything. Uh, if, if there were a needy person, <laughs> Job has become it. Um, he says, Surely one does not turn against the needy when in the disaster they cry for help. Did I not weep for those whose days were was hard? Was not my soul greed for the poor? But when I looked for good, evil came. And when I waited for light, darkness came. My inward parts are in turmoil and are never still. D- days of affliction come to meet me. I go about in sunless gloom. I stand up in the assembly and I cry for help. I am a brother of jackals and a companion of ostriches. 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 And yeah, that, the birds. The big birds that stick your head in the ground. Uh, my skin turns black and falls from me and my bones burn with heat. My lyre is turned to mourning and my pipe to the voice of those who weep. Basically, Job saying, look, I, I, when these people were needy, when other people were needy, when I had, 
I prayed for them. I, I did for them what I could. And now I'm the one facing the turmoil, facing the evil, and, and, and nothing's being done. Nothing's happening. Even my friends don't come to my rescue. Uh, you know, after that, we don't understand why God allows things to happen. You know, that, and that's the whole book of Job. We don't understand why God allows certain things to happen. Um, and, and oftentimes it, it may even be years down the road before we understand truly why something happened. Um, and, and Job just had, he just, he doesn't understand why things are happening. He, you know, he feels like he did the best that he could to be a good godly man. And we know he did because God himself said he was the most godly uh, in all of the East. And, and so, um, but now he, he's just like, I don't, I don't get why. I don't understand why. Um, and so he goes on, and he's going to talk about some sins now in chapter 31. And he's going to um, talk about uh, how he doesn't feel that he has uh, done those things. And, and, and if he has done those things then then certain things will happen and the the kind of the irony to it is some of these things have happened to him um that he says may it happen to me but but he, he once again he he's he's going to identify some sins what i want you to understand there are quite a few sins that the bible identifies directly one of the main sins that's identified directly over and over and over in scripture is a, is adultery um and, and and that's the first sin that he talks about. He says, I have made a covenant with my eyes, and then could I look upon a virgin? What would be my portion from God above and my heritage from Almighty on high? Does not calamity befall the unrighteous and disaster to the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways and number all my steps? And, and once again, he, he's talking about adultery here and, and how... He's been faithful to his wife that, that he's not had any girlfriends or anything of that nature. Um, and that, um, in fact, that he, and, and you know what's key, and what I love about it, you know, Jesus, in, in the, in the um, New Testament, Jesus talking about the sin of adultery, he says, no, well, not only those who commit it, but those who think upon it, who, who, who lust after another person in their own heart that is a sin and, and so here job says I, I don't even allow my eyes to look upon another woman that way so so he doesn't have that lust in his heart he doesn't even allow his eyes to look upon another woman and and, and, and think oh i would like for her to be my girlfriend or something like that you know he 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 doesn't even allow himself to go there uh, basically what he's saying and um, but then you know he says if I had calamity befall me and the unrighteous and disaster of iniquity and all this and he says does does he not see my ways and number my steps that last question to God do you not see me do you not see what I have done and what I have not done um, he goes on and talking about uh, falsehood another another big one that's always pulled out when talking about sin in scripture is lying lying telling the truth falsehood and and i'll be honest that's one i struggle with and it's not necessarily intentionally sometimes i, I mean i don't know i just I, sometimes i've i've said things and i've been like well that wasn't really the whole truth you know um and then sometimes we steer things in our way right we want you know to, to kind of help us get our way uh we will steer things and twist things, but that's another one, a big one that's called out here. It says, if I have walked with falsehood and my foot has hurried to deceit, let me be weighed in a just balance and let God know my integrity. If my step has turned aside from the way and my heart has followed my eyes and if any spot has clung to my hand, then let me sow and another eat and let what grows for me be rooted out another irony that's kind of what happened to him 
you know, and, and he's he's saying these things, and some of these things are kind of is kind of what happened. I mean, people took his animals. He grew them, raised them. <laughs> they took them. Um, so he's not really helping him his case here, um, but it, it kind of shows the flaw in their thinking, um, and, and and it kind of shows the difference. In and it's it's, to, it's all going to come together toward the end to hopefully help us understand God just a little better. We're never going to fully understand God until we get to heaven because his ways aren't our ways, right? We, we don't have that knowledge. We can't, and I think it's mainly because our little brains can't hold that knowledge uh, of God. And if we had all of that knowledge, we might go crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, he goes on, he says in verse 9, he says, if my heart has been enticed by a woman, and I have lain, lain in wait uh, at my neighbor's door. Uh, then let my wife uh, warn another, and let other men kneel over her. For well, that would be uh, a heinous crime, and that would be a criminal offense. For that would be a fire consuming down uh, to a Baden, uh, a and it would burn to the root uh, all my harvest. Once again, going back to adultery, uh, speaking of that, he has not uh, longed for another woman, uh, that he does not want another woman. If, if I have rejected the cause of my male or female slaves, when they brought a complaint against me, what then shall I do when God rises up? When he makes in inquiry, what shall I answer him? Did not he who made me in the womb make them? And did not one fashion us in the womb? Uh, a, key, a key note to, to maybe pick up here in verse 13 uh, is Job distinguishes out um, if I have rejected the cause of my male or female slaves. It was common practice in, since, since Eve... Since Eve manipulated Adam and kind of uh, influenced her to take the apple, it's been common practice that women were kind of a lesser, um, kind of a, you know, I don't like you're not lesser, ladies. I'm that's not what I'm saying, but it, it, in those days, it was common practice that the women did what the men told them to do, and they really had no say uh, for a long time. For a long time, even in our country here, women didn't have the right to vote. Uh, <laughs> woo, there's a lot more women folk than men folk in here, brother. <laughs> you better take some cover. I hope that Bible's got a thick leather binding. Uh, can protect you. I don't think that one sitting beside you is going to. <laughs> uh, but... But the idea, so, so, and I thought it was a kind of unique thing because Christ does this too. Christ not only makes the core, Christ makes sure that he, when he talked about things that he said, it's not just for the men, but it's for the women too. And, and Job here saying, not just the male servants, but the female servants too. I haven't taken advantage of any of them. And, and he distinguishes them out. Um, because in my thing is, in my thinking is that God never intended, uh, for a woman to be considered lesser. We, we, we have roles as husband and wives, as mothers and fathers. We all have unique, distinct roles, but we, as male and female, they're unique, they're distinct. But none are no more important than the other. We all play a part in this life. Um, and, and so I think Job is calling that out because, you know, it really, wasn't a, it really wasn't necessarily a bad thing in those days that if you took advantage of your female servants because they were, a lot of times, the ladies in those days were considered like, they, they were lesser than, than the cow dog, Okay. The, the work dog probably got better treatment than a lot of the women in those days, especially women slaves. They really got it bad. 
Um, and so Job here bringing out that point that he hasn't even he hasn't even offended his female uh, slaves. And but then he says, "Did not he who made me in the womb make them?" So he he's saying basically, "Were they not created just as I was created?" And and this is a key a key point. Um, that everybody should learn, and I wish I wish every human being on the face of this earth could get this point. God created every single one of us. The good, the bad, the ugly, God created every single person. And that's what Job was saying. Equal. That's right. He said, not only did the one who created me in the womb, did he not also create them? Did he not also make them? Every child, every adult, every elderly person, every single person, male, female, whatever, even if they want to go by a different letter or whatever, God created them. We're all created by one God. And, and Job brought that out. And I thought that, that very unique, being one of the oldest books of the Bible, to bring that point out. Because for us to love on other people and to love our neighbor as ourselves, we've got to see everybody as a created being of God. Maybe a broken, we're all, we've all been broken, right? Maybe we're all broken, we, we see everybody as a broken created being of God, but a created being of God. You're a created being of God. They're a created being of God. And maybe if we saw that as a nation, maybe we could come back together. But I, I don't know, maybe. A lot of people don't see it that way. Uh, in verse 16 it says, If I have withheld anything that the poor desired, and, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fall, fail, or have eaten my morsel alone, and the orphan has not eaten from it uh, for... From my youth, I reared the orphan like a father, and from the mother's womb, I guided the widow. Uh, I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing. If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, or a poor person without covering, whose loins have not blessed me, and who was not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the orphan because I saw I had supporters at the gate. Then let my shoulder blade fall from my shoulder, and let my arm be broken from its socket. For I was in terror and calamity from God, and I could not have faced his majesty. Oh, Job here kind of, and maybe he's realizing some of, the, some of the things that he's throwing out made this happen, it's kind of already happened to him. So now he throws out one that hasn't really happened to him. His shoulder hasn't fell out of socket. Uh, so he kind of throws that out there. If that's happened, may my shoulder fall out of socket. And I know it's kind of weird. It's kind of um, goofy. Uh, but that's just uh, how they thought things would happen in those days. Just like, oh, well, you know. Um, but Job, he's trying to make a point. He hasn't done or offended or hurt anybody he has took care of these people. Um, he goes on to verse 24. He says, If I have made a gold my trust, or called fine gold my confidence, if I have rejoiced because my wealth was great. Uh, and we know, and he goes on down, uh, talking about money and wealth and splendor. Um, if I have looked at the sun when it shone and the moon moving in splendor, and my heart has been secretly enticed, and my mouth has kissed my hand, this also would be iniquity to be punished by the judges, for I should have been false to God above. Basically saying, if I held anything in higher regard than God, even the sun, the moon, you know, that was a big practice in those days. People worshiped the sun and the moon. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know why. But I don't know why you wouldn't worship the one that created them. Uh, but anyway, um, they would, they would worship, they would worship the land, Mother Nature, people do that today, don't they? They worship Mother Nature, worship the land, uh, they worship sun, the moon, those type things. Um, 
But now, uh, Job said, if, if I, basically he's saying, had, had I had any, uh, this is another one, this is from the Ten Commandments, uh, the uh, idols. And if I had any other idols other than God, uh, you know, may this, may this bad things happen to me. Uh, he said, if I have rejoiced at the ruin of those who hated me or exalted uh, when evil overtook them, I have not let my mouth sin by asking for their lives with a curse. If those of my tent ever said, oh, that we might be sated with his flesh, a stranger has not lodged in the street. I have opened my doors to the traveler if I have concealed my transgression as others do by hiding my iniquity in my bosom because I stood in great fear of the multitude and to contempt the families and terrified me. Basically, have I held anything in secret so that I kept silence and did not go out of the doors? Um, oh, that I had one to hear me. So he wants uh, God to hear him. Um, but let me go back a little bit. And he's talking about uh, had he uh, not, uh, if he's not um, rejoiced in people's falling and people's going down. And, and, and you know, we kind of look back at chapter 27, 28 there where he kind of called out his enemies and how, uh, you know, I mean, was he saying he wanted them to die or was he just saying that they're eventually going to fall one day? Um, not real, not real clear exactly uh, on that point, but the idea here is basically up until this point, Job said, I've never, I've never even called for the death of someone who's done me wrong. And I've never hidden any sin in my heart. I've never hidden anything that people can't see. I've never concealed those things. And he says, oh, I just wish somebody would hear me. Oh, I just wish God was here to listen to me. And, and the thing about it is that Job knows that if God was there, it got, that, that he felt like if God was standing right there, that God would listen to him. And that God would hear him. And, and in fact, that God would be able to, to justify him because he knows what he's done. And he, so therefore, he knows that God knows what he's done. And so he's, he's, he's I have not done these things. And uh, surely he goes on in, in, in verse 36. He says, surely I would carry it on my shoulder. I would bind it on me like a crown, I would give him an account of all my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. Basically, Job saying, look, I'd be able to just walk right up to God because I know what I've done. A uh, little confidence there. Maybe, you know, borderline arrogance. Uh, but, but once again, like I said, this dude's gone through a lot of stuff. And what happens when we go through a lot of stuff we don't our, always our best don't come out does it it's not always our best that comes out he says if my land has cried against me and its furrows have wept together if i have eaten its shield without payment and caused the death of its owners let thorns grow instead of weed and a foul foul weeds instead of barley the words of job are ended i think maybe 38 through 40 was kind of at one time took out of order <laughs> Uh, I think they may have meant to go back over there around 28, 29, somewhere in there. Uh, but basically, Job is talking about uh, here in this last little section. Another key, another key, and I have preached this. God calls us to be conservationists of the land, of the earth. We don't worship the earth. God set us over the earth. We, we have authority over the earth. But God wants us to take care of it. When we plant crops and harvest things off of them, we need to put nutrients back and, and take care of the land. Um, when we go out, we don't just kill every animal we see. We harvest only what we need for food, and then we go on. It never, it, nothing drives me more nuts than to hear somebody say, yeah, I killed 20 deer last year. Or or something. Well, what'd you do? I give most of it away. 
Well, why are you shooting it? <laughs> well, you know, take care of the land. You know, if, if maybe if you kill your limit <coughs> and it's more than you need and, and you have some family you give to, that's one thing. But just to go out and shoot things, uh, there were people when I was, uh, there, there are people that still do it, that they kill it to sell it, uh, even though it's illegal uh, in, in our state. But, you know, it's, the, it's those types of things. God, God calls us to be conservationists, not just of the, of the land, but of animals and, and all. And God gave us dominion over them, but he gave us that dominion so we take care of them, right? And so that we uh, establish it. And I, and I just wanted to bring that out and, and note, uh, because it's, 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 it's said in other places of Scripture too, about how uh, they were taking advantage of the land and, and they took the cedars of Lebanon and they destroyed the land and how, how God was angry because they weren't conservationists, that they just stripped the land of this or that. God gave us the land to use, but he intended for us to use it in the correct way. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. And that, that keep it there has a meaning of taking care of it. That's right. That's right. So, so taking care, don't throw your garbage on the roadside, please. Because I may have to pick it up one day a year. And other people may have to pick it up more than one day a year. But, uh, but it's, it, God gave us this land to take care of, to use. Uh, so anyway, like I said, I felt like those verses are kind of out of place. They kind of go back probably a little earlier before he says, Oh, I wish God was here to hear all of this. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to end there. Uh, my prayer this week uh, is that we would take these things to heart as we would note these sins that this is one another one of those places it's kind of like a mirror to look and reflection uh, it kind of calls out some specific sins and I just want to kind of list those a little bit that, that, that those those three big ones adultery lying in idol worship or, or worshiping anything over God. Those are three big ones that are repeated over and over and over through, throughout the scriptures in different places. Uh, so let's definitely make sure we're doing the right thing and tending to our lives in those areas. Because when God repeats things, it's very, very important. And those are probably some of the things that most people fall to. Um, and and that, those are probably... Uh, three of the bigger things that, that people have a problem with. Either lying, bringing false witness, worshiping other things other than God, uh, or having immoral relations. Uh, so anyway, as we uh, close with a word of prayer, may God be with each of you. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. We thank you for the opportunity to open these words, to study these words. God, I pray that you would take these words, apply them to our heart, that we might go forward to be those hands and feet of Christ, that we might learn more about you. God, I thank you for all that you do, all that you've done, and all these things we pray in Christ's most wonderful and precious name. Amen. Amen.